Hi, welcome to another Unity Mobile from Scratch tutorial. Here I'm going to show you how to make a simple augmented reality application without the need to prepare the environment and using a mobile device's gyroscope. Augmented reality is projecting a 3D object over a video feed. And here are a couple of examples that I made many years ago using OpenGL. These require a still camera or a physical marker in the environment on which to project your 3D object. Augmented reality works by using a plane in your 3D environment and projecting a video feed from your camera onto it. The video feed going into your game environment makes it appear as though your mobile device has been turned into a window and you're seeing the real world through it live. The trick with augmented reality is to determine the orientation of your phone so that you can figure out where the virtual world horizon lines up with the real world horizon. To do this, we can use the built-in gyroscope in the device to determine which way it's facing. So the device itself has an X, Y and Z axis, just like we're used to working with in Unity. And the value that we get back of the device's orientation is called its attitude. And Unity has code to grab that attitude and then use it. Let's put all of that theory into practice. Now I've got a 3D environment that I've created in Unity and it's got a main camera in it which I've got sitting at the origin point 000 and I've added a 3D plane which is also sitting at 000. So let's just find our camera and you'll see that it's sitting directly on top of that plane. This plane is going to act as a reference point for lining up our world ground, our virtual world ground with the real world ground. So getting both horizons lined up. So I'm just going to make that bigger. So that kind of stretches off to infinity. And I'm at the same time move the camera up just a little bit away from it. Now this plane is really just to help us see that what we're programming is working when we build it out to our mobile device. Might I also point out that I'm building for Android at this point, um, so you might want to turn your build settings to Android initially, um, or iPhone, I guess, if you're using that. Now, this plane, um, because it is just a reference point, we don't want to see a great big white plane sitting in our camera view when we start to run this. So. I've got a shader that I'll put on this surface. So first of all, you'll need to create yourself a material. And I've got one I called, where is it, webcam. And it's just a bog standard default um, shader. So I'll add that webcam shader to my plane because that will allow me to change the shader type that is on that plane. Let's see if that worked, yep. Okay, so here's our standard shader. Now I'm going to change this to grid. You won't have grid yet, I'm gonna show you the code for that. Now this grid shader is really quite useful because you can change the color of it, make it green, and you can change the thickness of your lines, also the spacing of the lines if you want a nice tight little grid like that. Uh, and also the outside and the color of it. The code for the shader itself is in a file called grid.shader. You'll have to create this and put it into your project. Now I didn't write this code uh, because I'm not an expert on shaders by any means and I will make sure that I put the URL to where I got this code from in the video at the bottom of this page. So um, you'll have to copy this out and I'll also include this with the code on the website where you can download it from. Um, right, so sorry, let's start at shader at the top grid. Now this name here that you put in the top of the shader is what shows up in the drop down list for shaders in your material. So that's why it said grid when I dropped it down before. And you can see the properties that are exposed in the shader for setting are defined at the top. Now the rest of it, just, I'll just scroll, scroll through it for you. Essentially, it just sets it up so that the 
shader makes the plane transparent and draws lines on it at the different intervals. Once you've done that, save it, and then you'll find that particular shader will appear in the list of shaders that you get for your materials. And you can set the plane to grid, which will then give you this sort of effect like this. Now, the next thing you'll need is a plane to project the video from the webcam on. That plane will be stuck constantly to your camera because you want that to be what the entire scene in Unity is seeing. It's the feed from the camera. So um, select the camera and then go 3D object and create another plane like that. And this particular plane needs to be rotated so it's facing the camera. And that rotation is 90 minus 180 and zero. And then if we find the camera and just swivel it around, you'll see there's the plane. Now the plane itself needs to be visible inside the camera's viewing volume. So just select the plane and then drag it into the scene. Um, so you can see that it's now visible there. Okay, now you can put that back as far as you want, but what it needs to do is actually be scaled to fill up your entire window because that's all you want to be able to see. You, of course, you don't want to cut off any particular objects that you place in your scene. So you can select what sort of distance you want that video feed to appear at. And then just hit the R key and drag it out. One last thing I want to do before I start programming is to put something in the scene for us to look at. Of course, we're going to have the grid as a reference, but it's nice if you can see something in there. So you could put a cube uh, or a sphere or something. I've got this little goblin monster thing that I found on the asset store, um, and I'm just going to put it into my scene about there and just have it sitting somewhere so that you'll be able to see this guy um, in your, your virtual environment or in your augmented environment uh, because he'll be projected over the top of the video feed but it'll still keep him nice and level with your horizon line right so now it's time for some code the code I've got is very short and you'll be quite surprised how short it is the file is a C sharp file called cam gyro AR and this is what's in here. All right, so uh, first of all, um, I've just noticed I've got a library I'm not using anymore. I'll take that out. So this code here, it needs access to the um, plane that you've got sitting attached to your camera in order to put the video feed on it. And it's called web plane here. Now I'm also creating a camera parent for our camera. Now this is to get our orientations of our gyroscope just right. So if you've watched my previous videos in this playlist which talk about orientating the camera and actually turning it so it looks uh, around from left to right and also up and down without it messing around with the other coordinates, then you need to have a parent. So we'll create a parent first here We'll make the parent's location the same as our actual camera. So this code actually is attached to the camera. So this would be the camera here. And then we make the parent of our camera the cam parent game object. Now this is an important step here to make sure that your gyro orientations look good when you start using your device is that the initial position for the camera's parent is to rotate it 90 degrees around the right axis. Now that will have it facing and looking directly down at the ground. Okay, next we turn the gyro on. And finally in the start, we will attach our webcam texture. So we create a webcam texture 
we then um, set that texture to be the main texture of our plane that's attached to the camera and then we set it to play so the feed will start coming through. That's all you need to do to get your webcam feed onto that plane. Now in the update function is where all the magic happens as far as the rotation for your uh, camera to make it orientate pretty much to the real world. Now if you have tried out my previous tutorial on using the gyro to look around a 3D environment on a mobile device by using the device rotations, you'll know that the camera has what's called drift, uh, or I should say the, the gyro has drift. And so if you leave it sitting there, um, it will slowly look around the environment without you even touching it uh, because it's not absolutely perfectly accurate. So this method you'll find is not perfectly accurate, but that's because of the devices. So as devices get more and more um, accurate, you'll find that this will get better and better. Um, and if you look at stuff like Pokemon Go and that, it's all really faking this AR and uh, it's not absolutely perfect. Like the, the positions of objects don't stay stuck to exactly the same place. But that's okay. Um, you have to build that into your game design to take that into consideration. Anyway, um, back to this rotation of our gyro. So we're going to create a rotation based on the attitude or the rotation of our device, the which way it's facing in space. Now, the attitude is a quaternion. So we need to create a quaternion variable to store it in. Um, and then we create this quaternion using the attitude of the gyroscope and the X, Y and the Z values of that are lined up. Now the Z value itself of a rotation is usually coming out of the screen towards you in the positive direction. And so making it negative is going to force it to go the other way. Now, um, you might not be familiar with quaternions, but hopefully you have a healthy respect for them because they're the best way of actually performing rotations mathematically and ensuring things do what you want it to do. And they have a extra value. Besides the X, Y, and W, they also have this W value here. Now, without going into too much mathematical background about what a quaternion is, the W value is required when you create one. And in this case, it's actually made negative. And the negative of a W means that the rotation you're specifying is in 360 degrees. Um, so yeah, that's what that's doing. Now um, we're setting the attitude into this rotation fix variable. And then we're setting the rotation, the local rotation of our camera uh, which is attached to our parent to this rotation fix and that will allow the camera to um, roll around and look at the real world based on uh, the orientation of the device. Okay so save that code and just go back into Unity. You want to attach that code to the camera now um, the camera also needs to know, sorry, the script needs to know about that actual web plane that you created, which is this one here. Should call it webcam plane, shouldn't I? It's not web. Um, now, so that's this plane here that's attached to the camera. This other plane, remember, is our ground, which you should probably call ground because it will just help you not to get confused. Uh, and so the code will now project the webcam feed onto that plane and uh, you will see the ground overlaid as well as this and you've got the movement from the gyro now determining how that camera is going to rotate around. So if you uh, now save this and build it out to your device, you'll be able to see it in action. And there you have it, simple augmented reality with Unity.